Here I am, Pasadena, one of two Panda Express innovation kitchens. And this is where they experiment with new food, decor, service. Let's go check it out. Gotta say, as soon as I walked in, I smelled the orange chicken. And it smells pretty good. So this is the innovation kitchen. People cooking in the background. Here it is, Panda Express Innovation Kitchen. All right, since I'm at the Innovation Kitchen, I got everything on the menu. Well, actually, let me clarify that. I did not get the beef and broccoli because obviously I'm not gonna eat my enemy. Well, maybe I should. But I gotta go to dinner and broccoli just kind of fills you up. And I did not get the vegetarian spring rolls, but everything else is represented here. So this is the, the biggest thing from the Innovation Kitchen is this. You know, the most famous dish at Panda Express is the orange chicken. Well, meet the orange chicken chicken sandwich. Okay, a typical looking chicken sandwich, fried chicken in the middle, it looks like coleslaw, and some what kind of looks like Thousand Island dressing on the bottom. Okay, this is the orange chicken patty. The orange sauce is laid out on top. Chicken patty seems nice and crispy. All right, I'm gonna give you the good and the bad. The good is that this is an incredibly well-flavored sandwich. The sauce is a little sweet and spicy. The crunch factor is really, really nice. Chicken's got a nice crunch. The coleslaw on the bottom's got a nice crunch. After a couple bites, it leaves your tongue tinkling a little bit from the heat, which I like. What I don't like about a sandwich is that the chicken is dry. I mean, it's not horrendously dry, but it's dry. I don't really taste the orange chickenness that should come with an orange chicken sandwich. I mean, you see the, the sauce on the top, but I kind of wish they, they just kind of enveloped the entire fried chicken in the sauce. If you just ask me what kind of sandwich this is, I just tell you it's a spicy chicken sandwich. I would never say this is an orange chicken sandwich, but overall it's a tasty sandwich. All right, next up, this is really interesting. There's a grilled teriyaki chicken on the menu as well as a brown fried rice. It looks like it has some quinoa in there as well. And then I got some eggplant and deep fried tofu. You gotta eat that fried rice with some really saucy, aggressively flavored dish because on its own, it really doesn't taste like anything. I mean, you taste the natural sweetness of the grain. Other than that, really not much flavor. Teriyaki chicken. Ah, oh, please don't be dry, please don't be dry. That is pretty delicious. The chicken is tender, the teriyaki sauce is not overly sweet. A lot of umami flavor in this chicken. That is really good. I feel like this plate is, in general, very healthy for me. Um, this is uh, just eggplant and fried tofu. Mm. That's not bad. Eggplant is tender. The fried tofu's got a nice chew to it. Sauce, again, not overly sweet or anything. So it kind of goes well with this fried rice. Wow, if you're a vegetarian, or even if you're not, that's a really good dish to try. All right, something really weird just happened to me. I've been telling you guys my memory's been getting bad. I'm just forgetting something left and right. I don't know if you remember the video where I was driving to the airport in, in Washington, D.C., and I thought I had a flight that day, but I didn't. This is really freaky. So I got one orange chicken sandwich, which I was munching on, and then I looked at my tray, and I realized I got two more orange chicken sandwiches. Why would I get three orange chicken sandwiches? I either subconsciously really, really love the orange chicken sandwich, or I might be going a little cuckoo. Okay, that cuckoo, chicken, coo, chicken coop, coop. It's not like I got three different chicken sandwiches. They only have the orange chicken sandwich. I never remember ordering three. What is going on in my head? Wow, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the fact that I think I really love this orange chicken sandwich. That's the only thing I'm willing to accept. Mmm. Mmm. I think this one might be better. I bet the third one would be better than this. Chase it with some hot sour soup. I feel like hot and sour soup is one of those dishes in Chinese restaurants that no matter where you go, as long as it's, it's more of a westernized Chinese restaurant, every single restaurant tastes exactly the same. I think this might be a conspiracy. I could ask my dad because 
I feel like every single westernized Chinese restaurant utilizes the exact same fried rice and hot and sour soup recipe. I truly believe that. I mean, it's not bad. It just tastes like every single Chinese takeout restaurant. All right, this I'm really, really excited about. So this is part of, of the Innovation Kitchen. Oh, this is a hefty baby. I'm thinking five pounds. What they can do in this Innovation Kitchen is that they can put, I think like three items of whatever you want into a burrito. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a giant burrito. It's the first burrito I've ever seen in a Chinese American restaurant. In this burrito, I got the famous orange chicken, lo mein, fried rice, spicy chicken, and their spicy beef, which apparently brought along its ugly broccoli cousin. Also, I got some honey walnut shrimp. That would have been actually really, really good if I didn't just get a mouthful of broccoli on that one. This is actually such a good idea. This might be the best thing I had at Panda Express all the four times I've eaten here. This is freaking delicious. I mean, rice in a burrito. If it works for Chipotle, so I wouldn't work for this. I like the chow mein too. It's got a nice chewy texture. The walnut shrimp brings a hint of sweetness and crunch. And the sauce from the spicy beef just takes it home. Yeah, this is awesome. Just combine a bunch of good flavors, wrap it up in a burrito. This definitely works. Chicken egg roll. This tastes exactly like a crispy fried dumpling. And 100% need some dipping sauce. I wish I had my hot oil here. It will definitely make all this taste much better. But yeah, egg roll, not a fan. And what's cool about this innovative kitchen is they actually have a tea bar set up so you can order bubble tea. I got one of their mango lemonades. <coughs> oh yeah, that's not good. That is all sour. I feel like it's burning a hole in my stomach as we speak. And also, I got some Panda Express bubble tea. This is our creme brulee bubble tea. Oh yeah, much, much better. Much, much better. The compound chicken. I think I remember in the last video, I said this was my favorite dish here. Oh, that still remains true to this day. This is delicious. What I should have done, was a burrito of something sweet, like the orange chicken, mixed with the compound chicken, because the compound chicken, you got these really spicy chili peppers here. This will definitely light the burrito on fire. You got the crunch from the peanuts. 100%, if you're gonna do the burrito, use the compound chicken as an ingredient. Absolutely delicious. Still the best dish at Panda Express, by far. Green bean chicken. It kind of just tastes like sweet and sour chicken with green beans mixed in it. This should go really good with that brown fried rice. I'm gonna give it some much needed flavor. Spicy Beijing beef. That's exactly like, you know General Sho, the guy who uh, been frying up all that saucy sweet chicken. It tastes exactly like if one day he just got up and said, you know what, I'm a little sick of chicken. I want some beef. That's what it tastes like. This is a new item, I think, as well. This is an almond chicken. It's made with chicken breast, so it's a little tad dry. It's not bad. I think my biggest thing about Panda Express is that there's a lot of variations of pretty much the same dish. You know, the orange chicken is just really deep fried chicken with an orange sauce, with a sticky orange sauce, which is good. And I think the thing with, with Panda Express and pretty much every westernized Chinese restaurant is that a lot of the dishes will taste really similar to each other because they're using the same sauce, we're using the same cooking method. Not to say it's not delicious, it just becomes a little repetitive. Like this thing is pretty much, I feel like the General Charles chicken sauce and then some scallions and almonds were added. But it's definitely not gonna be an explosive new flavor or anything. Overall, my favorite thing, still the compound chicken. Give me the compound chicken, give me whatever other rice, even that brown rice, I'm gonna have a good meal. I think the worst thing might just be that egg roll. Again, like, yeah, I'm not really familiar with Panda Express, I don't eat this all the time. To me, it's just okay. It just tastes like food I, I grew up eating. But does it really taste innovative? I'm not sure about that. 
Again, this is just a personal preference. I know a lot of people love Panda Express, love the flavor of the food. So this is just what I think about it. So this is coming from someone who grew up eating these types of foods. And now I'm really just into traditional flavors. All right, I got three chicken sandwiches to finish up. But after that, we are going to a sit down Panda Express called the Panda Inn. Here it is, Panda Inn. Gotta say, this is like a fine dining Chinese restaurant. It's all dark and vibey inside. Let's go in. So some of the popular items from Panda Express is on the menu, like honey walnut shrimp. There's sweet and pungent shrimp. Shrimp and garlic sauce, compound shrimp, fish and black bean sauce. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. Wow, so beef and broccoli family serving, family size is $37. One, a regular size of beef and broccoli, $19. String beans for $16. Bok choy for $16. Mapo tofu regular size, $16. We're definitely not in express land anymore. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the Kung Pao Sun Yang, which is a three meat Kung Pao place. Because I love their Kung Pao shrimp. Do some homemade mini dumplings. Do some garlic noodles. And I'll see what they think I should get too. So these are the dumplings. Basically $1 per dumpling. And when they say mini dumplings, guys, these are mini. Like this is a, what I would consider like a, like a, like a soup bowl. A soup bowl of mini dumplings. I asked for some hot oil, so we'll wait till that gets here. Uh, about 10 minutes has passed since my request for hot oil. Uh, I don't think it's coming, so I'm just gonna eat this on its own. They're not bad, pretty soupy for dumplings. Look how much soup is in these dumplings. Pretty good amount of soup. <laughs> my hot oil just arrived. Honestly, I think they taste pretty good. And the chili sauce has a ton of heat. All right, the Kung Pao is here. The Kung Pao looks really, really good. Tons of spices, tons of sauce. These are the garlic noodles. So far, at least from the top, I see noodles. I don't see the garlic. Do you see the garlic? Boiled spaghetti. It just looks like boiled spaghetti, yeah. So hopefully it's a big reveal. Let's see. It's big, big reveal. What? There, where is... Did they forget the garlic? No, I smell the garlic now. I smell the garlic. It just, but it looks very non-garlicky. Oh, thank you, mapa tofu. Thank you so much. Oh, that's a nice big bowl of mapa tofu. I smell the garlic. I taste the garlic a little bit, but otherwise it just tastes like boiled spaghetti. There's really no texture. Um, it's supposed to have Parmesan cheese on here, but I don't really taste much of that. Maybe this is what they use instead of rice for dishes? But I don't think so because they're offering to cook meat into the noodles. So I'm just gonna go eat some of my, some of my compound with the noodles itself. Kung Pao is delicious, but the noodles themselves, not great. Super one dimensional. Doesn't look appetizing and doesn't taste appetizing. So maybe just stick to the rice. I'm actually super excited for the rice and the Kung Pao to meet and have a magical moment together. I always say the Kung Pao anything at Panda Express is absolutely amazing. I think their Kung Pao tastes better than a lot of the authentic Chinese restaurants I've been to. This is the Mapa Tofu. I got this because I remember when I got this in Korea, this tasted amazing. So hopefully it does so here as well. I smell the peppercorns, the tofu is nice and tender. Really not spicy enough, not nummy enough. There's not enough meat in here. I don't think there's any meat in here, which is fine. Not all put mapo tofu needs meat. I feel like this needs more something. And I don't like doing this at a Chinese restaurant, but I gotta add some soy sauce to this. Panda beef, signature dish. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this. Got a whiff of that, and that nice vinegary flavor just clobbed me across the face. This is one of their signature dishes. So beef fried, covered in their signature sweet and spicy sauce. You definitely taste more of the 
batter and the sauce, then you do the beef. It's kind of jerky, it's a little hard to chew. I mean, this is trans. It's super crispy. But the sauce though, which is, I think their signature orange, uh, orange spicy sauce. Goes pretty good with the rice. It's not really spicy though. 100% vesting here. It's a compound. This is something I really, really like every single time I eat at Panda Express. I think personally it's the number one dish. Most of the other stuff I had today, especially the garlic noodle and the mapo tofu, they will make your rice sad. I got some soy sauce. Let's try to fix this mapo tofu. Some chilies. Mm. It's better. Spice pretty much helps everything. You know, instant noodles, the smapa tofu, people's love lives. Still, not something I would recommend if you come here. But the version I had in South Korea, loved it. Ah, I think that's it. I don't think there's any more dishes I want to try. Whoa. Whoa. This is cool. It's a frosted fortune cookie. I wonder if people had to like, just, just hand wrap every single one of these. Probably, right? A great pleasure in life is doing what others say you can't. That's true. Everybody keeps telling me I can't have milk. Love myself a milk bubble tea. I'm gonna go get one right now. Sugar cane juice with watermelon and mint. Mmm. I highly recommend this. So yeah, just spent a day going to Panda Express restaurants around the LA area. I heard about the Panda Express Innovation Kitchen. I heard about the Panda Inn. So while in LA, just really wanted to try it out. For the Innovation Kitchen, I think the only thing that's really different is the sandwich and the fact that they will wrap whatever you want into a giant tortilla, which honestly was pretty good. Otherwise, I don't really feel like it's, it's very innovative. I mean, there's a tea bar, so that's kind of cool. But the rest of the stuff I think can be found at any Panda Express. So Panda Inn, um, I didn't know what to really expect it was a sit-down Panda Express, so I thought it'd be kind of neat to go and try it out. It was reminiscent of, I, I think the best comparison would be a slightly more authentic P.F. Chang's without the delicious lettuce wrap. Although there was a lettuce wrap on the menu. And again, this review is just my personal preference. In both places, the compound chicken was the best thing there. I feel like the garlic noodle was kind of like that new Wonder Woman movie. It didn't look good and it wasn't good. The dumpling, although I thought it was tasty, but for $1 a bite, I do feel like that was pretty steep. That is my review of Panda Express Innovation Kitchen and the Panda Inn. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.